Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. Today's dyeing project involves some new dyes that I have not tried before. So for my birthday, one of my stops was my favorite local yarn store, the Bobbin Tree, and I picked up three new colors. So I have, these are uh, Pro-Chem Pro Acid Dyes, and so they work well on all natural fibers like wool, alpaca, and silk. Today we're dyeing some wool. Uh, these are some colors that uh, are lacking in my collection, the oranges. So I have Spiced Pumpkin, Wine Rose, and Burgundy. So I also have, from a previous shopping trip, I picked up some chocolate brown, which I have not used yet either. So I think uh, I'll use these four colors. I have two warps in the dye bath. One is a natural colored uh, wool and the other is a tweed, a heathery tweed, and it uh, is a darker color to begin with. So the dyes will show up differently on the two different warps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my respirator and I'm going to uh, put the dye powders into solution. I have put all the dye powder into stock. What I do, it's um, not super precise. My scale isn't the most precise. So I measure out 10 grams on my scale. My scale only goes to the nearest gram, not tenths of a gram so um, you know it's more or less so 10 grams of dye powder in a jar and then topped up with water and that's how I do it that's my stock I figure it works out to about a two and a half percent solution so it's fairly strong as far as dye stocks go I put a dab of each color on a paper towel so we have the Spiced Pumpkin, the Wine Rose, the Burgundy, and the Chocolate Brown. And the Chocolate Brown has a little purple tinge to it. In the jar, it actually looks purplish. Um, and on the paper towel, it is separating, it's breaking out. So I don't know if that means it's going to break on the yarn, or that's just once it gets heat and acid, if it'll be a, a normal brown so but that looks like uh, an opportunity to do an opportunity to do some uh, playing and maybe see if the color will break the wine rose looks this one here looks a, a fairly weak um, color compared to say the burgundy it um, maybe is just meant to be a lighter color so it um, probably will be swallowed up by other colors if we're not careful. So I've got uh, these in the jars. What I'll probably do is extract uh, a few milliliters of each just or, or you know scoop out a tablespoon and put it in a glass measuring cup and then pour it on. I think that's the plan. Hey warps have been soaking in cold water no acid yet. Uh, let's alternate them. There are two chains, uh, but it'll be one warp. And so I'm going to reverse the, the ends so that the die is on a different spot. This one is longer, so it gets to be gets to be ruffled. We are going to add a fair amount of water. I want the dye to move around a little bit in there and blend the colors nicely. And the water level will get higher as we add color. So we'll start off with the pumpkin. Again, not super precise. I'm just going to reach in the jar and 
pull out a tablespoon of the pumpkin. Oh, let's make it two. I'm going to fill the measuring cup up so we have a mixture here. And I'm just going to pour it on. I don't mind it moving around a bit. Yes, I'm checking out new colors to see what they look like, but I don't mind them blending. There's a touch left in here. Do I think I will pour it in? Why not? And then we'll use the measuring cup for the next color. Wine rose, which, well, maybe we'll put that one in last to cover all the empty places. So the next color is the burgundy, which is quite bright. Now I've done this before, but I've always had acid in the water, so the dye has not traveled so much. This one's really traveling. Let's see what it looks like poured on. Yeah, it's pretty strong, even with just the one tablespoon. And it's traveling too. Next color, chocolate brown. And I'm going to put it down at this end. We're running out of white yarn down there. I want to put some of that wine rose before it's overpowered. The high water levels are pushing the color down to the other end of the pan. And that's causing the color to cover that. And I don't want it to. So let's get some wine rose there to push it back. Now I'm going to turn the heat on. At some point I'm going to have to add some um, acid. Don't know if it was a good idea to, to not have it in right from the start. Don't know. Usually I add it sooner, so this is an experiment. I'm adding a bit of the acidic water right now. And look, you can see the, the water clear there already, just like that. And it's starting to change color too as I move the acid through. Look at that. We have a reddish color here and a purple color here. Now which one had the more acid in it? On reflection, I think it's because the pumpkin spice color had moved down the yarn and mixed with the burgundy and that's what made it red in that part. Beautiful colors though, oh my goodness. I'm going to uh, let this heat up. We'll flip the yarn over and look at the other side once, uh, once the water has started to, to clear. 
and then I'll add more color if I think it needs it. So it's been simmering for, oh, at least half an hour, probably longer. So I'm going to shut it off right now. And we're just going to let this cool down in the pan. The most of the color has cleared. The water is, is more or less clear. There's a bit, uh, a little bit of, well, there was a bit of orange. Nope, not anymore. A little tinge of purple at the far end there. But I have a feeling that it is going to uh, completely absorb if I just let it cool down in the pan. So I need to be really careful with my um, <laughs> video camera phone, which is what uh, you're watching this on. I, last time I went to remove it, I dropped the phone right into the pan here um, while it was hot. The phone has survived! Yay! Um, it was very warm and very wet, but it survived. Uh, this is cold now. It looks like the color has completely uh, gone into the yarn. And there's no color left in the pan, which is great. So I'm going to remove it now and, and wash it. So the, uh, oh, I almost knocked it back into the, into the pen. Uh, so, oh, look at the color. Oh, it's gorgeous. So now I'm just going to rinse it out. Uh, use a little bit of soap just to make sure all the, the color is, uh, absorbed and nothing's loose and floating around in the fibers and then I'm going to hang it to dry oh these colors are just gorgeous so here they are uh, they'll dry a little bit lighter, of course, but what a great combination. So I'll rinse these out, hang them to dry, and then we'll take a look at them when they're dry. But Oh, I am so happy with how this ended up. Uh, this here is the 4-cell 4-ply, uh, so 100% um, wool. Both are, are, are wool. And this is the tweed and okay so this end is the chocolate brown and then that moved into the burgundy here all the way to here and then the spiced pumpkin is the orange part here and at the very end, we have the wine rose. Again, it's the chocolate brown that did the, the interesting stuff. Look at all the different colors we have in here. So I'm definitely going to experiment with the, with the chocolate brown. It is doing some interesting things, and I want to see if this is a result of mixing with the other colors or if this is what chocolate brown does. So just for the fun of it, I'm going to pull the two chains across the the camera, down the length of them, uh, so you can see how the two chains are dyed differently and how the color will change down the length of the warp. So the two chains will not be the same at any point during the weaving process. 
So two very coordinated but offset color schemes. Here are the uh, ties that are holding the cross. So for easy warping, there's a cross. And back to the end. I just measured them. They are, it, the, the chains are 96 inches long. They started off at three yards under a bit of tension on the warping board. After dyeing, uh, we have 96 inches not under tension. So that's just um, relaxed like this. So, so that's not a big loss as far as um, shrinkage um, in the dyeing process. So there's 96 inches there to put on the loom, which is, um, I find, just right for a V cowl and also for any other kind of scarf, even on a, on a floor loom, I think. So here's the the completed warp uh, chain together, so you can see the colors, uh, how they react with each other. And it is ready to go on a loom. There's a total of 96 ends. One chain is 66 ends and the other is 30 ends. It can be arranged any way you like. You can use your own creativity on that. And this is going into the shop. This one I'll probably weave up. This is a total of uh, 84 ends and I like to add in uh, stripes of a coordinating color. So this one will be um, made into something, which very well could end up in my shop as well. This beautiful warp deserves a beautiful warm weft. So my choice of weft is palette fingering weight this is knit picks yarn and it has a very similar it has very similar characteristics to the well it's blowing out isn't it it has very similar characteristics to the yarn that i used for the warp it has a similar twist and it has the, a similar loft as the yarn that was used in this warp. So I think a good complementary color to this warp is a chocolate brown. So this is going into a brown dye pot. So I have the chocolate brown stock and this is water that's already heated. One, two, three. I think that's a nice dark brown. I don't want it to be a medium brown or anything. I want it to be a dark brown. So we're going with four tablespoons of the dye stock. I'm gonna add the acid right away and have it hot. We're gonna add the yarn to the hot acidic pot. Okay, this is hot water with uh, a heaping spoonful of citric acid in the water so that pot should be decently acidic and it's already fairly warm so I think we'll just go ahead and put the yarn in. It hasn't been soaking super long but that's all right. I, I want it to be a little uneven, the color to be a little uneven. I did add one, it comes with two ties, and I added one tie, an extra one, plus the the removable zip tie. So it's tied in four places, so I can 
stir it around and not have to worry too much about the um, about tangling. That's, this is interesting. I haven't dyed uh, just the chocolate brown yet, so this is first time I'm going to be seeing it by itself. So far, it's quite reddish, orangish. It's the next day. And this is nice and cold. There's the zip tie and oh, it's a beautiful brown. It has all kinds of nuances in there. It has red, reddish areas. There's a reddish area. This is more brown, but oh, there's a variety in here. It's gorgeous. This is going to be the perfect weft. Perfect weft for that project. Just look at that. So I'm weaving this wonderful warp up on my rigid heddle loom. I am almost at the end. I will be making a V cowl, so I'm about to uh, release it from the loom so that I can bring the beginning in and weave this last bit here. Uh, it's a cozy day. It's between Christmas and New Year's. And I'm sitting, tending the fire while I work. And here is the finished weaving. I love the color scheme. It turned out so well. The colors all go with each other so beautifully. I dyed uh, chocolate brown weft, which I first warped as these thin darker lines and then used as the weft in the main body of the V cowl and then the colors of the dyed warp come together to make this slightly brighter section at the front. I'm very happy with these colors and I think I will dye more yarn with this combination. I think it looks great. If you'd like to help support me in the making of these videos, please consider joining my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching.